Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's All Meta Setup is dedicated to those who love anime and want to zip around with lightning speed. Using Bacchus and World Line Zero, you'll be able to fill out your ultimate dream of going full lightning god with dealing hefty amount of damage via just the sword alone. Along with Stakers Freeze Effect and Bacchus R Surge Effect, this build is worth the try as mobile, flexible in primary second weapon usage and does not require a lot of mods to make it work. It will ultimately allow you to see just how good the new sword rework is with his now unlimited heavy attack spam. So to start, you're going to want to have Winter Shroud where dodging near enemies will slow them down. And then you want to have Grim Harvest where defeating slowed or frozen combatants creates stasis crystals which grant you melee energy. The following aspects will provide extra uptime for our stasis abilities once in effect and also grant us near unlimited shards that benefits our melee and weapon of use. Although Winter Shroud is basic and lackluster to some, it does fit the theme of slowing down time and zipping across the field from one area to another. The slow is generally handy for engaging and disengaging when needed, and the melee is useful for slowing or freezing on impact as well. This makes a highly mobile set even more lethal in close quarter fights. For fragments, we have Whispers of Durance, where slow from the abilities last longer. Whisper of Refraction, where defeating slow targets grants you class ability energy. Whispers of Fissures increases the damage and size of crystals or frozen targets. Whispers of Conduction where nearby status shards track to you. And the Whispers of Rhyme where collecting shards grant a small amount of overshield. With how strong status hunters are with their flexibility of fragments and aspects, you are getting a lot back compared to using these status warlock or titans. As is mainly the aspects doing the heavy lifting, you won't need a lot to make the build fully work. But ideally, having what I have shown will make the build feel more complete in the long run. Durant and Refraction will play a big part when using our dodge and melee, while Conduction and Rhyme will play off the shards we'll be creating. Fissures is always a good choice to go with, but I can also see Fractures and Hunger both play a big part if you use your melee a lot. Only issue is that both of them will come with negative stats, so do choose wisely. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest in the mobility, discipline and intellect as the three core stats. Although melee will also play a part in the build, we don't need to add on mods as the shards created will be plentiful and useful. At tier 8, mobility will play a big part in how fast we can use our blink dodge effect after this cooldown. Mask or Bacchus will lock our class ability down for a few seconds after use, while also giving us the damage bonus for around 11 seconds. At the tier we're currently at, our cooldown after lockdown will be around 25 seconds, which is fairly fast enough to repeat our actions over and over again. Along with Whispers of Refraction, this should push it down to around a 20 second cooldown instead, which is even better on the grand scheme of things. Discipline at tier 7 with Front of Focus will provide a tier 10 cooldown rate once our armor charges are active and displayed when in action. At tier 10, our stack combined will give us a 46 second cooldown when using dust filled grenades, which is fairly fast when you don't add on any other mods to it. The only thing here that will play a significant role is the distribution mod, which will grant users a 3.5% base ability regen. You can also add in the impact induction mod for the extra 20% towards the stat, but only if you have the room to do so and only if you are low leveled. Intellect is at tier 7. And although this is more centered toward my armor stats themselves, to even my goal, if we had the space, we could have added on the Front of Wisdom to the mix and reach a tier 10 instead, all in one build. Tier 5 is also suitable as we will be using Orb Generator mods to hasten its recovery, and also as the super is an area to nice super, it works out well in our favor. For armor charges, having the charge up mod will grant users an extra armor charge when collecting orbs of power. From there, Stasis Siphon will aid us in creating orbs of power via weapon kills, Heavy Handed will create orbs via mini kills, and Powerful Attraction will allow us to gather orbs within our Venicity much faster. Next, we can use the armor charges to buffer weapon damage via our Stasis Weapon Surge mod by 7%. Adding the Time Dilation mod to this will extend all of our time based effects to around 15 seconds, and just to play it safe, having the Recuperation mod available will allow us to easily recover health when in dire straits. Don't forget to have the Heavy Ammo mod and Art Reserves mod, as they are going to be a must have when using our swords. Now lastly, the weapons being used is World Line Zero, which, alongside a number of other swords in general, have received a brand new rework for the heavy attack. 
heavy attack can now be used much more often with little to no cooldown involved, which makes them highly viable against the tougher enemies which are much more noticeable now. This has also made the Zodic Sword even more stronger, such as World Line Zero and its heavy attack. The sword effect allows users to teleport from where they are and do a circular heavy attack from one area to another, and this can be chained for a second run as well. With a cooldown, this did limit down how powerful the sword could be against higher end enemies, but now this is a thing of the past, and honestly, it feels much more better overall as a big DPS sword against a wide array of enemies. Its range and duration is good, while the damage being applied can be advantageous when combined with arc amplified effects, aka Mask of Bacchus, times 4 arc surge. Combining two exotics morphs this build into a blink and you miss it setup, which is capable of taking down Luke and the Hive within one fully charged hit, or getting their health down to at least half very easily. And don't worry about the negative effect that Bacchus provides, as I've added a Arc Surge mod as backup in case we do run out of the damage multiplying effect. Now the recent update towards swords now make using their heavy attack a lot more comfortable and enjoyable to play with on a large scale. Although this build is brief and silly in comparison, once more heavily focused endgame builds are made apparent, I can see players will just see how strong the swords are against selected targets, I could also see a rise in the selected swords becoming more and more common in endgame content. So what makes this build special? Well, it's more of an off-meta setup that can be used in endgame to a slight degree. It's designed for those that enjoy sipping around and doing a large amount of damage as if you're Raiden from the legendary Metal Gear Solid franchise. Jigs aside, using Bacchus and the World Line together allows users to make full use of the closing the gap from one area to another via its teleporting aspect. This in PvP could be incredibly deadly with catching groups out as it becomes incredibly hard for you to be hit, while in PvE content it just makes it easier to take out multiple groups in two hits. Incredibly, this does work out pretty well against bosses and mini bosses, as the Bacchus damage buff provided and then the wind up of a sword allows us to deal out two big heavy attacks that 9 times out of 10 will take their health down to half or just outright kill them. In a small closed arena, this is where the build was succeed the most in, as it can be further combined with your stasis effects to outright slow the entire area down and then go for the kill. But think of the amount of anime you have watched where the main protagonist goes so fast, all you see is a white line to where OP made their mark. In many ways, that's kind of what the build offers, and if you like anime and Destiny, then I think this is a job well done for you. Only issue with the build, which is going to be common, is the R2 double bling attack sometimes not connecting. The first hit will always land when applied, but if you ever go against a target that is quite tall, or likes to fly around at times, then you're going to experience a few missed hits here and there. It's amazing against grounded targets, as all that damage can be stacked into one place. But anything tall or flying wise will result in you looking like a idiot. Overall, the new buff allows Zotic Swords to feel much more better in the grand scheme of things compared to how they were before, and builds like this wouldn't be fully possible until Bungie allowed it. It's fun, chaotic, with a slice of anime applied. This build will do well for those that want to feel as anime as possible. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.